Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent Battle Rush Seasonal Event, and that means we have only 8 seconds to take our turn and 15 seconds to pick our cards in between rounds. That means we have to play extremely quickly. This time around, we're going to play a crazy deck with monsters with two cards that are going to make our opponents lose their minds. Let's take a look at the deck. So as a reminder, because in the Battle Rush Seasonal Event we have so little time to take our turn, that means that we want to use cards that do things passively. That means that we'll minimize the number of orders and cards that have us fishing through our deck or our graveyard, because otherwise we might not have time to finish our turn and we'd end up burning a card in the process. And so today's deck will be Monsters using the Carapace Leader ability, which boosts an allied unit by three and gives it Veil. We can do this three times. Fortunately, this is a pretty quick leader ability, which is important because some leader abilities take a long time to do, so you might not have time to finish using them on your turn. And one of the reasons why this is not one of the first decks that I'm featuring in this seasonal event is because this deck is going to be a little bit more difficult to use because it will have more cards that do some of those things like orders and going through our deck. So full disclosure, this is going to be a little more difficult to execute than, say, the Northern realms and skeleton decks that we've also looked at for this seasonal event. And as soon as you see the first card in this deck, you'll see exactly what I mean. Oneiromancy means that we can play any card from our deck. This normally does take a really long time to play, so I've been critical of other people including it in their decks for this seasonal event, but there's only going to be one, maybe two cards that we need with this, so that should make it a little bit easier for us to get the job done with it. And one of those cards is Keltullus. This is one of the foundational cards in this deck. It is going to drive our opponent crazy because when we play it in the melee row, on our turn end, we will destroy the lowest unit on the side with the most units. So this deck will minimize the number of units, maximize the number of special cards. That means that almost always our opponent is going to have more units than us, and they are going to be the one that is losing a card to Keltullus. And although this technically isn't damage, it is a passive way of destroying cards at the end of our turn, so it does work well in this seasonal event. Not to mention, it takes a lot of brain power to plan around dealing with Keltullus, and then they will struggle to find an answer to it. Next card on our list, and the other foundational card in this deck, is Vi. And this is a huge card, because whenever it gets destroyed, it goes back into our deck, and its base power increases by three. So what we want to do is consume this as many times as possible and then summon it back onto the playing field in order to consume it again. Next card on the list is Royal Decree, and this plays a unit from our deck. This will likely be Vi. Once we've consumed it, we want to get it back onto the playing field, and this is a way to do it. Problem with this is it does require fishing through our deck, so this does take a long time to do. So it is important to plan in advance when you're going to play this card, so that as soon as your turn begins, you play this card and begin sifting through your deck to find Vi. Next on our list is a card that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Let's call it the Unicorn. And if we play it in the melee row, then each player will summon the units with the highest provision cost from their deck into the melee row. And because that is summon and not play, that means that any deploy abilities will not trigger, but any other abilities, say things that happen at the end of your turn, will trigger. And that is key because the highest provision cost unit in our deck is Keltullus, and that is a perfectly all right card to be summoning into the melee row. Second highest card, if we've already done something with Keltullus, would be Vi, which is another card we want to get onto the playing field from our deck. Third highest card is the one that we are about to see, which is another card that works really well for us. And if we find that for some reason we don't want to get any of those cards out, we could deploy this card in the range row, in which case we would summon our lowest unit and our opponents would summon their lowest unit, which is not necessarily something that we want to do, but is mostly just a safety net in case something goes wrong and we don't want to get any of those other big cards into the melee row. Next, we have the Cave Troll, and this would be our third highest provision cost unit outside of the Unicorn. So this is the other one that we could potentially end up summoning to the melee row with it. And it is our Defender, so this is a good way of protecting either Keltullus or Vi. Next on our list is Alzer's Double Cross, which will play the highest unit from our deck. That would start off as being Keltullus, and then the second highest card would be Vi. If we have already consumed Vi, then Vi would become the highest card in our deck. Next, we have Dole Lock, which is the monster's location card. This does take a little bit of time to play because you play it, and then you have to choose between playing the Succubus, Puka, Chimera, or Hybrid. That's not the big part of this, though. The big part is actually the order that comes after that, because it moves the highest power unit to the top of our deck. So this is a way of making sure that, say, we've consumed Vi, we get it up to the top of our deck, so that in the next round, we can guarantee that we draw into it. Next is Wear Rat, and this will consume the unit to the right of it at the end of our turn, which is a nice, quick way to consume, because it doesn't require any order, so saves us on clicks, and therefore saves us on time. We can also use its order ability to de-boost and then spawn a bunch of rats, but that's not likely something that we'll want 
want to do because we want to minimize the number of units on our side. Next, we have Adrenaline Rush, which is a special card. So again, minimizing the number of units in this deck. And if we have only one unit in a row, then it will boost that unit by eight. So this is a huge boost. And because we have so few units, with a little bit of planning, we should be able to make this happen. Next, we have Swallow, which is another boosting special card. A little bit more straightforward because it doesn't matter how many units we have in a given row. Next, we have Mahakam Ale, which boosts by five and then also removes lock. So if we have any one of our big units get locked, then this is a way of removing it and also supplying some boosts. Next, we have a couple of Slizzards and every turn these can consume one unit on the same row. So this is a consistent source of being able to consume by. This is in order and therefore it does take some time to make this happen. So if you are going to do this, plan in advance, make sure that you are prepared to do this as quickly as possible. Otherwise you may run out of time. Next, we have a couple of bar guests and when we play this card, it will consume a unit. Again, target here would be by. And if we have dominance, meaning if we have the highest card on the playing field, then we can consume a unit again with an order. That is fairly likely to happen because we are consolidating a lot of our power in one or two units. That is, of course, an order ability, though, and therefore it does take a little bit of extra time. So if you are planning on doing that, again, make sure you plan in advance so you can do it as quickly as possible. Next, we have a couple of Rot Fiends, and when we destroy these units, they will damage a random enemy unit by four. So these are other units that are useful to consume and minimize the number of units on our side. Next, we have the Bridge Troll, which is another unit that we want to destroy. When we do so, it will boost our highest ally unit by four. Next, we have Golden Froth, which boosts three adjacent units by two. Because we have so few units, this is actually going to be difficult to take full advantage of. However, other four provision cost special cards that apply boosts typically either apply or remove a status that makes it a little more complicated than we'd like to have when we have such little time to plan our moves. Next, we have Thaw, which is one of the other low provision cost special cards that apply boosts and applies Veil. This is a status that we are perfectly comfortable giving to any of our cards. And lastly, we have an Indriga Warrior, and this will consume units to either side of it when we play it. Another way of minimizing the number of units that we have on the playing field to help with Keltullus, and also a way to consume Vi. So there's a look at the deck. Again, not the most straightforward of all the Battle Rush seasonal event decks that we've created thus far. So if you are new to the event, then I recommend that you use one of the decks that we featured previously. However, if you are up to the challenge of speeding through your turn and using some cards that do require additional clicks, then this could be the deck for you. Okay, so we're going against Scoia'tael movement, and they will go first. This is a concern. This is perhaps the strongest opponent that could go against us because we have cards like Keltullus that when we play them in the melee row can do their ability, but as soon as they get moved, not so much, and they are certainly capable of doing lots of moving. I think we uh, want to get rid of some of you, and this might just be largely a Keltullus round, which is concerning, because as soon as we play this, it's going to get moved and it's going to get shut down. Otherwise, I mean, we can wear rat, and then I'm not even sure what we would do with wear rat. I suppose we could, on our next turn, throw down our location, and then have some cards get consumed from this. Thinking that might be the next best option. They'll throw down their location. Probably make a cat school witcher that they do. Okay, let's make some food for where we're at. And we want you to get boosted when consumption happens. Not going to be anything immediately for where we're at to consume, but then we'll use the order, and that will spawn some drones for where we're at. Okay, more cat witchers means more damage from our opponent. And now we do this. And now I suppose we do some boosting. Now we consume, and you get boosted with the consumption, which is why I wanted you specifically. Though if you were to say have buy out, then you could go with the one that does the consuming. But this is going to be tough to work with here, because we can't really do the thing that we very much want to do. I mean, we'll throw down Keltalus because we more or less have to here. But it's going to burn a card on the opposing side, and it's going to get immediately moved, assuming they do so here. But they're hesitating, and that means they may not have time to make it happen. Might have shocked them a bit with the Keltellus play, but that is good. The longer it lasts, the more it'll help us out. Okay, and now Keltellus is the only unit out here on this row, so we can use Adrenaline Rush. That's useful. And we will burn more of their cards, so okay, it's working at the moment. And at this point, I suppose even if they do move Keltellus, it's in some ways done its job. They'll pass. Okay. And this should be enough for us to take the win in round one here. Somehow, we made Keltellus work even against Movement Scoia'tael. 
Okay, now we got Vi, and we have some consumption for Vi. Can we bring Vi back? We can, in a few different ways. Just try to maximize them. Then I think we get the slizzard down first. That'll be a quick way to consume. That way, we'll play Vi next turn. We'll immediately consume it. That'll take a little bit of time to make that happen. So be prepared to go right off the bat. Okay, here we go. By you. Consume you. Time to spare. Might even give a quick leader ability charge. Give you some veil. Make it a little bit harder for you to take this lizard out. And we do want this lizard to stay in the melee row, because then we can use this card here to get out another Vi. It is probably going to release... Let's actually get Vi this way first. It's probably going to release Gezrus from our opponent, which is another card that unfortunately is still functional, even if it gets summoned, because it's not a deployability that makes it strong, it's it's other abilities. So in some ways, it's not necessarily something that we want to do as much as we might against other opponents. Okay, now we can do this. This should also be Vi. Consume you here. And then we might even pass a little bit early in this round, and since we've won round one, we have a little bit of a luxury there. We can kind of dare our opponent to try to catch up to us, because they need to. Now, if they have a quick way of removing one strong card, then of course that would be absolutely the way to go. And we don't have our cave troll anymore, so... Or at least, I don't even remember if we used our cave troll, come to think of it. But uh, at this point, well, I suppose we just do some boosting, but don't have a lot of firepower remaining unless we bring Vi back through the Unicorn, which, as I said, I'm not entirely sure we want to do. Oh, that's a card we didn't want to see. Okay, so I think we pass here. Because there's no way we can win in round two now. It's okay, we won round one, that's fine. And we're hoping that our big Vi carryover, now that we have consumed it several times, will be enough of a difference maker for us to take round three. Okay, so we have two forms of consumption, two forms of getting Vi back, actually three forms of consumption. That means we want more ways to summon. Ideally, we got more ways to consume. That's not perfect, but we do have at least some ways to make it happen. And our opponent may have already taken Gezros in their hand here. Not out of the question. So for that reason, the Unicorn might be a little bit safer. What with this being the last round, chances are if they did have Gezros, they, of course, want to have him in their hand. But uh, if they were unfortunate and did not manage to get him... Uh... This is a risk. I hesitated. And I did not think we are going to have time. I did not have time to actually select Vi there. Our turn had ended as soon as I clicked on the lizard, but because there's only one unit for it to consume, it chose Vi. Okay, there is Gesros. So now, confirmed, it is safe, or at least safer, to play the Unicorn. We're going to do this. This will give us Vi. And then that will give their defender... Okay, that's not the end of the world. Now, we don't have any other ways to get Vi back, is the unfortunate part. That's what we were fishing for at the very end there. And so at this point, it's fine if you move cards around. We don't really care too much. We just have more consumption, which is also not going to make a huge difference here. So, I mean, we'll just, like, I guess, play you and consume you. Technically, we should probably try to, uh, okay, well, I didn't get the chance to target this one. Fortunately, it does go on the Slithered. That's who I wanted to target in case they have something like poison. But we should try to change the row on this a bit. You know, not have everything in the melee row. Otherwise, if they have a Geralt Yurden, then we could be in trouble. I mean, if they do, then we've definitely lost either way. If Geralt Quen, which is uh, making me a little bit nervous here, do you have another Geralt? Because if you have Yurden or Geralt of Rivia, either of those really, then we are certainly toast. Okay, uh, doesn't really matter who we go with here. Uh, I suppose we'll give you Veil, because why not? Although we are probably going to consume you with this Vargas, so... Okay, maybe it didn't make a huge difference. This is the key here. Oh, and it is a big deal that we did not play any additional cards in this row. Otherwise, they would have gone down. Okay, and now we can play you. We can, I guess, consume you, sure. And, yes, we were able, with Vi plus Keltellus, to defeat Movement Scoia'tael, the deck that was probably the most capable of taking us out. Okay, so we're going against monsters, and we will go first. And we have Keltellus, we have Cave Troll, but we don't have Vi. We do have at least one way to get it. Well, there is Vi, okay. 
Now we want to consume... Let's get rid of you. Okay, well, this can work. Let's get the lizard down first. That'll set up the consumption for Vi. We'll want to play this next in all likelihood and consume it right off the bat. And our opponent may be going with Thrive. At least that'd be the indication based on your Intriga larva here. Let's do this. Then this. And then pass. And the scissor could get some attention here. See what our opponent does to it, if anything. Apply some bleed. Uh, it's not terribly concerning, but more thrive. Probably what we should read into about that. Then the question is, do we have a way to get Vi back? And we do. So let's do it. And we could get it back with Oniromancy. That's probably a good route to take here, because that would mean that we'd get our copy of Oniromancy in a future round, and we could use that to get it going forward. Okay, you'll move the Slizzard to another row. That doesn't really matter. At least, as long as we still have time to... Whoa, uh-oh. That slowed me down. That slowed me down. As long as we still have time to do this, which I didn't technically have time to target by specifically. Our turn had already ended, but because there's only one possible unit to target, it did consume it. And our opponent says, can't do it nearly messed that one up there and that is the danger of using this deck but if you can fit in all the steps that you need to fit in then it is hard to beat okay so we're gonna go against northern realms here and they will go first and we drew into all of our big units here Keltellus, Vi, and the cave troll we just want some consumption we can do that with slizzard we'd like to maybe get a little bit more we don't need the unicorn here Vargas does help i think we can make that work and there, ooh, that takes a while. Creating a random unit, try to infantry, that is a good one, yes. I think we want to lead off the Slizzard here. That's usually a good first turn card to play. And maybe even use a leader ability. I think we'll stick with this for now, though. Because we don't want this to get destroyed. What we're doing is we're setting up the consumption. So that way, as soon as we play Vi, we can consume it. And not have to worry about our opponent doing something to destroy it. So I'm knowing that we're going to have to play a card and also use this consume order ability and if you are prepared to do that then you can certainly fit it in on your turn but if you dilly dally at all then it can be tricky and we probably do want to play a cave troll soon in case our opponent does have anything to sabotage this setup here because this is going to become a pretty big slizzard and we don't want them to destroy that and they're seemingly going for charges which of all the northern realm setups that you could possibly do i would not recommend it for this seasonal event it takes way too much time and when he sergeant again does have order which is similar have to use that a couple times okay we are going to try to fish through our deck here get by and this is gonna be difficult well fortunately it's right there and we might even have time to consume it great okay so we were fortunate there i looked through the deck and immediately saw vi but that is not always that straightforward now i mean we do have keltalus remaining and our opponent does have far more units than us although they did just give us one but I think at this point, we might start using some of our special cards and save Keltels for a future round. Let's give, yeah, give Veil to our defender. Try to make it a little bit tougher to take him out and spread our strength a little bit between a few different units. Of course, Slizzard is hiding behind the defender, so unlikely for our opponent to be able to take it out. But yeah, they are using way too many order abilities here. We do have three adjacent units, so this is one of the few times that we can take full advantage of Golden Froth, so let's do that. And right now, I'm kind of just trying to sneak by with some of our weaker units and weaker cards. We could even consume you now with a scissor. Well, if you don't get destroyed immediately. And I think Thaw is probably next on the list. And we'll try to save Keltellus and maybe even the Rot Fiend for the next round. Uh, let's see, this. And I suppose this will minimize the number of units. Oh, why did I? Well, she has Death Wish. For some reason, I thought that was a deploy building, not a Death Wish. So don't do that. Amphibious Assault, again, just takes so long to do. So we could go Rot Fiend and then consume that. That would have been a much better target. And our opponent has surpassed us here. It could potentially be time for Keltellus, although, tell you what, I'm not sure we have time to pull it off here. So it's going to be close. We could surprise them with the Keltellus play. I'd like to give us a little more time to pull it off, though. So right now, it would destroy our Tusa Depth, which gives just one point. We're getting rid of, I mean, locking a Cave Troll Defender doesn't really do anything. We'll throw it down. 
So at least the first time, it's not going to do much. Second time round, it would destroy the K20 Sergeant, which is a little bit better, but still not great. Okay, so let's see. We could... I'm thinking we may need to do something here. Consume you. That will definitely be enough. Didn't have time to do the math. It was going to be close, so we might have just barely been able to get by without having to play a card, but I think we go for it here. Win round one. We're down a card, so we'll definitely pass immediately in round two. We'll play for the round three. We did, unfortunately, need to play most of our big cards there. However, we have the big Vi, which we did consume on a few occasions. So we'll try to find a way to get it here, and this could be a way to make it happen. So I think we're still going to deliberately pass immediately. But if we play you in the melee row, then we will summon the highest provision cost unit from our deck, and that will be Vi. This could be another way to get it to the top of our deck, but we need to do that in round two in order to set up drawing into it in round three, so we don't really want this card anymore. Adrenaline Rush is actually going to be difficult as well to make that work, because we're going to summon Vi to the same row as the Unicorn. So I think top priority is get rid of you and get rid of you. Okay, we can make this work. And we're also going to fish out one of our opponent's best cards without having them being able to use the deploy ability from this. So let's get this lizard down first, because that could be a way to consume Vi immediately. But we are only going to be able to consume Vi once here, unfortunately, because we did use some of our summoning ability in round one, and we don't have any other cards that allow us to do it here. It's more consumption, and we do have a unit that we can consume for a little bit of a bonus. So there's something to be said for that. Okay. So let's do this now. This will give us Vi, and then we want to consume Vi quickly. Okay, success there. And then we are certainly putting a target on the Scissor's back, because we don't have a way of defending it. We used our Cave Troll in round one, but we're hoping that that big Vi slam was enough. I mean, ideally we would have gotten a little bit more carry over from it, but I think now what we do is we get you down here, and we're going to double consume here, and we'll start... Passing out some of these. Ideally, would have put it on the Slizzard as well. I actually wanted to do that, but ran out of time. Couldn't target it. Okay, try to infantry. You will give the boost to that, for sure. And it actually... Yeah, let's go here. Consume the Death Wish unit. And we'll give you the Veil that I was saying we probably wanted to put on previously. Could even put all of our strength into this one Slizzard if we really wanted to. In case our opponent has any way of destroying a unit, then uh, we really don't want to do that. But of course, that is the weakness of this setup here. So now we're just stuck with some special cards here for some boosts. Let's split our boosts a little bit between the two cards, just in case. But if one of these goes down, then we're, we're losing. But we have enough of a lead here that we're hoping it will be enough. Let's see, they'll create a copy of that card. Brings them close. They are above us, yes, but then as soon as we do this... That will give us a one-point lead. Oh, boy. There you have it. So there's a look at a Keltullus plus Vi Monsters deck for the new Battle Rush seasonal event. Difficult to pull it off, but if you do, it is a lot of fun. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know what other decks you think could be effective in this seasonal event. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.